All right, so we're going to move on now from sequences to series. Um, now, in a sense, a, a series is just a special type of sequence. Um, it's a new sequence that's built from an old sequence. Um, maybe more, more correctly, a series is the limit of this new sequence. Um, let me explain. So start with some sequence. Okay, so we have a sequence, let's say, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, and so on. I'm going to write out the terms, okay? So, so as an example, we could do the sequence 1, 1 half, 1 quarter, right? So in general, this is... Just a geometric sequence, right, with ratio 1 half, 1 over powers of 2. And now what we're going to do is we're going to form the so-called partial sums. Okay. So S1 is just A1. S2 is the sum of the first two terms in the sequence. Okay, S3 will be A1 plus A2 plus A3. S4 will be A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4, and so on, right? So in general, we could say Sn would be the sum k going from 1 to n, of a k, okay, some of the first n terms. Okay. So this gives me a new sequence, right? This is is a sequence, okay? And if you have a sequence, then it's reasonable to ask, does it converge? And, well, what, what would be the limit of that sequence, right? What should it mean to say, okay, well, what would it converge to? What would be that limit? If that limit exists, what does it look like? It's the limit n going to infinity of this Sn. Well, maybe we write that as the limit n going to infinity of this sum, k going from 1 to n of a k, and it's sort of notationally convenient to say, well, really what we mean then is something like this. It's the sum k going from 1 to infinity of a sub k, right? We just keep adding the terms forever, okay? So this notation that you see here, this is what we would call a series, okay? So a series is the sum of a sequence, okay? Now, for a lot of sequences that, even sequences that converge, a series is not necessarily going to converge, right? Um, in particular, we can see right away that um, if the terms in the sequence are not shrinking and not shrinking fast enough, right? For example, if, if all the values in this sequence are staying close to some value like, say, 2, right? Then this is like 2, 2 plus 2, 2 plus 2 plus 2, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, plus two right? Um, if, you're, if you keep adding more and more terms and those terms are always close to 2, well, then this sum is going to explode on you, right? The sum gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It doesn't have a limit. So it may not converge, right? So when we're studying sequences, we can use a lot of sort of calculus techniques. We can play around. We can often, you know, use analytic arguments to say, oh yes, this sequence converges, and it converges to a particular limit. Here we just calculated it. Um, series is a very sort of different approach. The flavor is much different. The feeling is different. Because when you're dealing with series, it's rare that you can actually say what a series converges to. This happens to be one where we can. So maybe it's a bad example. But a lot of the time, um, you, you're just trying to show that a series converges. You want to show that this sum right? The limit of this sum is finite, that you actually get a value out. 
You may never be able to calculate it. It might be that all you can do is say that the limit exists. It has a value. We don't know what it is, but it exists. Right? Um, that can be frustrating for some people. It's a change in process from a lot of what you've done. The only thing you've seen so far that's similar to it is probably when you're doing like comparison tests for improper integrals. Um, so it's a bit of an adjustment, but hopefully it's one that you're able to make. Uh, coming back to this one here, let's see what those partial sums look like. Why not? S1 is 1. S2 is 1 plus a half, which is 3 halves. S3, 1 plus a half plus a quarter. Um, so let's see. That is 4 quarters plus 2 quarters plus 1 quarter. 7 quarters, right? S4, 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth. 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8, I get 15 over 8, okay? S5, 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus 1 over 16. And if you add that all up, you find that you get 31 over, over 16, right? Um, you get 2 minus 1, 2 minus a half, 2 minus a quarter, 2 minus an eighth, 2 minus a sixteenth, and, and so on. And so you might guess that this pattern continues. Of course, you should actually show it, and there are ways to show it, and we'll do that later on. Um, but each of these Partial sums, these are called partial sums, right? Um, is 2 minus a number, and the number that we're subtracting gets smaller and smaller as we go through the partial sums, which makes you think that, hey, maybe, just maybe, this adds up to something, right? And actually, you can sort of see it visually, right? If you think about taking the number line from 0 to 2, there's 1 in the middle, and you start filling it up, right? Um, well, at the first, and so you always fill half of what there is to fill, right? So in the first step, we add one, right? In the second step, we add a half. In the third step, we add a quarter. That's half of what's left over. In the fourth step, we add an eighth. Then we add a sixteenth, right? Um, so you get this sort of like Zeno's paradox style thing going on. Um, at each step, you, you, know, you cover half the distance that's remaining, right? So you go half the distance remaining. So there's always a little bit remaining because you only cover half the remaining distance, right? But each time you recover half the remaining, every time you cover half the remaining distance, you get a little bit closer and closer and closer to two until the distance that's left is so small um, that, you know, it's less than, let's say, epsilon, for example, if you're thinking about doing epsilon n definition for a limit. Um, and so, indeed, you can show that the limit actually converges, converges to 2, and the sum, k going from 1 to infinity, actually, we started at um, 0, right? 1 is 1 over 2 to the 0, 1 over 2 to the k comes out to be 2. Pretty cool.